we're now going to have a look at simple if statements. Now, don't worry, if statements aren't overly that complicated. Um, in GovPy, there's two ways of doing if statements. I'm going to show you both ways, but I'm going to concentrate on one way because this is the way that I just prefer doing it. Um, also, we're going to look at using else statements, else if statements, and we're going to incorporate all these into this one tutorial. So I've got my Wii Remote connected. Um, I'm going to let you know now that currently I've lost my main Wii Remote, the one that GlovePie synced with first. So I've only got my second Wii Remote. So whenever I'm referring to inputs from the Wii Remote, I'm going to be referring to the second one. That's because I'm using the second remote. You, on the other hand, if you might be only have one Wii Remote, in that case you'll be referring to the first Wii Remote. However, if you have your possession a third Wii Remote that you synced, you could be using a third one. So you need to replace the number two with whatever Wii Remote you're actually using. So, let's get started. Basic if statement looks something like this. If we go if we moat one dot a equals true, and then we put an open squiggly bracket on the same line, next line down, and now we're going to use the debug tool. Now, our debug allows you to output data that we can actually see while this script's running. Now I'm going to show you a brief example. You use the command D. Bug. Just move the mouse out of the way, and then that equals something, and you put this in speech brackets. I'm going to just put in test. Then on the next line, I'm going to do a close squirrely bracket. So in between those two brackets goes all our code that we want to happen if we press a button on the Wii remote. So I'm now going to run, and if I press the A button on the Wii remote, nothing happens. That's because I set it to Wii remote one out of habit. I've got to remember I'm using the second Wii Remote. So now I'm going to run. If I press A, it says test. If I let go, nothing happens. That's because I want to constantly debug out, set the debug to false. And then as soon as I let, press the Wii Remote, it says test. As soon as I let go, it says nothing. So there you can see, you can tell when I'm pressing the Wii Remote. And that's using a simple if statement. Now there's another way of writing this if statement without the brackets if you prefer this way. And all we do is we don't have an open bracket, we don't have a closed bracket, but at the end of the if statement we type in end if. Like so. And as you can see that does the same thing. Um, that Those are the two ways of doing if statements. Personally, I do prefer the other method. Just to me it's a lot better. Um, now we're going to actually just mo modify this if statement slightly so that it only outputs tests when both the Wii Remote, the A button and the B button are pressed on the Wii Remote. So this is where brackets come in. So I'm going to put brackets, then I'm going to put another pair of brackets in, and this time I'm going to go Wii Remote 2.b. And then we're going to just put in the same statement that we put in when we wanted to make something happen on when we pressed two buttons before, and that's the two and symbols. So as soon as we run this, if I press A on its own, nothing happens. If I press B on its own, nothing happens. If I press them together, you can see that there it says test in the debug box. So that works really nicely. Now we're going to look at something called an else. Oh, by the way, we could stick that to a nor an or if we wanted. So we could either press A or B. But currently, as I said, we're going to just look at an else statement. Now, an else statement goes in between the brackets still. So we have our open bracket, we have the code we want to do, we then stick in an else statement, and then we can stick in something like this. Let's say debug is going to equal not so we can remove this debug statement at the top now. So we have our code. Then we have... Oh, by the way, something I forgot to mention. You see this bit here? We don't need to put equals true. Whenever you refer to the Wii Remote, 
you can actually go if we remote dot a and what that basically says if the Wii remote button is pressed then do the following code you see um, so that you don't actually if if you want to check see if a button's pressed you don't need to put if it equals true if you just put if we remote dot a and it, as it says there if we remote dot a or we remote dot b it means if either button's pressed so it's just a, it's just a, a way that you can reduce your code and really speed up the way that it runs because it's got less code to process um, so this code anyway we have our open squarely bracket we have our, our stuff we want to do we then have an else statement and then we have our other stuff we want to do so, now the else statement this happens if either of these conditions up here are not true so basically if the a button and the b button are both both of them are not pressed then it will do the else part and then after that we have our close squarely bracket to end the statement so you see neither the a or b button are pressed so it says note if I press either the a or the b button it says test um, I could change that again to an and if I wanted so basically it will always do the else unless both the A and B button are pressed on their own they do nothing together it says test so that's using else finally we can do something called an else if where we're sticking another if statement so I could go else if so else if and then we're going to go we moat two dot minus. So, so basically, if I press A and B, it says test. If I press minus, it says note, and that's the difference. So basically, if I press A and B and then press minus nothing happens because this else if will only ever happen if the previous condition is not true so if we remote if the a and the b button aren't pressed then it will go to the else if and check to see if the minus button is pressed if it is it will then run the code so that's a bro brief a very brief overview of s statements i'm honestly i'm not going into a lot of detail on how s statements work because I'm, I'm really assuming that you've got some knowledge of programming if not, there are lots of tutorials on my site on different languages covering if statements. If you want to understand more of the theory of them, if you just check those out so you can get a better understanding of it. But really, scripting in GloovePy, you do need a, a bit of a basis for programming. And I'm, I'm not really going to go in depth on it over and over again, because if I do that, I'll, all the tutorials on the site will be really boring if you've actually got some programming experience in the past. So that is all I'm going to cover in this tutorial.